and I was also um, driving for Uber and Lyft. And that was very stressful because, I mean, I was grateful that I had a car to be able to make ends meet. But at the same time, I was just like trying to, I was freaking out because I don't have the money to fly out to these major orchestras to audition. Okay, so this is my third vlog. I am so excited for this vlog because I get to share with you my personal story on just about everything about how I became a violinist, how I became a musician, and where my story kind of began and where I am now. Hi, my name is Eric. If we're meeting for the first time, I'm a violinist and uh, thanks for stopping by my YouTube channel. I do a lot of vlogs, how-to tutorial tips on the violin, and other YouTube videos. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and also hit those bell notifications for future videos. So my story began when I was age three and a half. I started the violin when I was um, pretty much, yeah, three and a half, three and a half years old, and uh, I didn't choose the instrument. Actually, my mother, who was a pianist at the time, was a music educator. Uh, she was like, here you go, here's a violin, and uh, you're going to start playing this right now. And I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to grab a violin. I just started playing, and there's a piano in, in, in my living room, and my mom played piano, and I would always play Suzuki book uh, with my mom, and that was a whole lot of fun. Yeah, but you know what? Music became like a really important part of my life since then. And there was actually like a pivot point where I was not practicing as much. I remember very clearly, I was like maybe seven or eight years old. My parents sat me down and they were like, Eric, the, you know, the violin is an expensive hobby. And if you want to do this, that's fine. You just got to let us know. And if, if you really want to commit to the violin, you kind of have to give us an answer by tomorrow. And this was like a late evening chat in the kitchen table. And it was my mom and my dad sitting right across from me. And I, I remember that was like a really, really important decision because I'm like, well, yeah, I admit I'm not practicing that much. Okay, fine. But you know, I still like playing the violin. You know, I, I still enjoy it. I like playing it. You know, I like the sound of it. And I was like, well, maybe I'm not going to give it up. So the next day I came down to my mom and my dad. I'm like, I'm going to stick to it. That was one of the pivot points for me where I started think thinking, I'm like, okay, well, maybe I could pursue violin a little bit more seriously. I practice a little more. And uh, that's how it all began. And, you know, later on in my youth, I, you know, I started practicing a lot more. Um, I joined a, I joined a violin school where I did like bi-weekly violin classes. Rep, rep, they're called like repertoire classes. I would play like an entire list of, you know, violin pieces. And uh, this was like every two weeks, I would just have to play the entire list. And you know, I was kind of strolling along, you know, I went on violin tours with my violin school and that was a whole lot of fun. But then once high school hit, I'm like, I had that serious conversation with my parents again and they were like, okay, well, you know, it's the junior year of high school, you kind of have to make a decision on what you're going to pursue as a career. And I was just like, well, I obviously wanted music to be a career. So I started looking into some options, but I wasn't like 100% dedicated into going to uh, pursue a career in music. So, you know, just for fun, I was browsing around. I didn't really have an idea of what I wanted to do other than music. But I was like thinking of like different career paths. I was like, you know, maybe architecture. That's like kind of interesting. I like symmetry and all that stuff. Maybe it adds a little bit of math. I mean, I sucked at math, but I like the way you know, like architecture looks and maybe I could, and there's some sort of kind of creativity when it comes to architecture. So, you know, I was still debating on what I wanted to do and I was having a rehearsal with my accompanist and the accompanist gave me an idea of like applying to a music festival. I've never done in, like international music festivals before in the summer and I was like, oh, I don't know, never tried it and this would be like a very serious audition and um, as it turns out, I, I, worked really hard for this audition. Uh, this was for uh, the Interlochen Summer Arts Program where I applied for like a seven week program and uh, I was just like, okay, well, you know, this was kind of like my contract with my parents. Like, I'm like, look, listen, if I get in on um, with some scholarship, 
that means it's some sign from the universe, from God, whatever you may call it, that this is what I was meant to do. I was meant to pursue, to play the violin, and I was really serious about it. If I didn't get in, then I would have been like, okay, fine, I'm not gonna pursue music as a career. But then I submitted my audition recording, and maybe a month and a half, two months later, I was kind of freaking out. I'm like, did I get in? Did I not? And this this was kind of like a defining moment for me because this kind of helped, this will help me decide. I'm like, okay, should I do music as a career? And I got in. So that was really, really awesome. And I was able to be a part of the Emerson Scholarship Program. This was back in like 2010. Like this was, wow, 10 years ago. Unbelievable what happens in 10 years. So I went to Interlochen for the for the summer, spent seven weeks there. It's an incredible place. This uh, video is not sponsored by Interlochen, but um, totally recommend this uh, this program. It's great and uh, it's made a lot of friends. Uh, and to this day, I still keep those friends from uh, those years from Interlochen ten years ago. So that was that's a really cool and special place. So it was at this program at this camp at Interlochen. I was like, okay. I'm gonna pursue a career in music. And then I came back from the festival, I went to my teacher and I go, I'm gonna audition, I'm gonna do it. And I had a list of schools that I was interested in and I'm gonna, I'm gonna apply to all these schools. I was actually really behind in the process. Usually when you decide to go to music school, you apply or start looking into teach like two and a half years before you even go to college. So I was really, really behind in the process. It, I had a lot of catching up to do. I decided to play some Mendelssohn Concerto, some Bach, uh, Paganini Caprice, like all the standard repertoire that was asked of me for these auditions. It was an incredibly stressful process because I was just not sure if this I was cut out for it. I didn't have enough time. I wasn't sure if these schools were the right fit for me, but I applied to them anyway. And uh, I had I had a lesson with a, with a professor at the Boston Conservatory and really clicked with him. And I did the whole audition process. I, I remember that after that audition that day, it was snowing and I had to go to New York for my audition at a at a New York music school. And uh, I had a phone call with this professor and and he was like, yeah, you know, you did a good job. Like, you know, I was really pleased with your with your audition. And I, I hope to be in touch with you and hope to have you in the fall. So that was a very stressful time because I had to wait for all the results and pretty much what I, I had to get a scholarship. I, I worked so hard and music school would uh, not, be, not be in the picture if it wasn't for some kind of scholarship money. But that professor and uh, you know, the Boston Conservatory, again, not sponsored by them. It was just, that's my alma mater. And I was like, okay, well, I, and they're like, we accept you. We want, we want you at, at, in Boston next year in the fall. And this is what we require of you. This is who your professor will be. And that was like, I was on cloud nine. I was so happy. And that was like an incredible shift in my um, my life because I like decided to do this this music career path. And I was focused. I was dedicated, and it happened. So then the the next fall, I was in Boston. And those years in Boston were like completely life changing because it was the first time I was away from home. I had no family out on the East Coast and, and I was kind of a wreck because I had no idea how to live life and also be a student and kind of survive in that town. And it was, uh, it was a life changing experience. So I did four years in Boston and then I decided to stick around Boston to freelance and I actually made a pretty big decision of not going into my master's right away. And I was maybe one of three or four people in my graduating class that decided not to get a master's right away. And the reason being was I just wanted to figure out if I wanted to continue pursuing the things I wanted to pursue. So most of my undergrad was trying to be an orchestral musician. And uh, for, for those of you who do know me and who listen to my podcast, the Everyday Musician podcast, which I'll also leave links down below, I, I talk about pretty frequently about how I got an audition with the Utah Symphony. Uh, this was 2014, fall of 2014. 
and oh gosh, six years ago, I can't believe the time is flying. I had this audition with Utah Symphony six years ago, and I went to this audition, you know, standard professional orchestra audition. It was my first time ever playing one. I remember clearly that there was a big giant screen and they only had me for 10 minutes and I had to wait, I had a number and everything that you hear about orchestra auditions, it's true. They give you a number, you play your excerpts, then they call you back if you make it to the second round. And to be honest, I wasn't even expecting to get into the second round, but I'm like, you know what, let me try it, see what it's all about, see if this is a career path for me. And even though I loved orchestra music, that audition changed my perspective on my music career. The flight back from Utah, I'm like, do I really want to spend the next 10 years of my life sacrificing everything just to make it into an orchestra? And the answer was no. I still wanted to play music and perform music, but the fact that I had to sacrifice a whole lot within the next few years to... It just, it just didn't even make any sense to me. I'm like, you don't have to define your success by getting into an orchestra. And it was kind of like that senior year in Boston where I was like, okay, well, I think I have to shift my thinking. I Maybe I don't want to pursue a career as an orchestral musician. So what are the things that I can do to help change my career path? Maybe not change my career path, but change my direction in music. Obvious answer to me was to become more entrepreneurial. And what does that mean? I mean, the, defini the definition of an entrepreneur is someone who makes a business with some capital, right? Capital meaning some money, which a lot of classical musicians don't have because we need to work, we need to play gigs, we need to teach to be able to have that capital to invest in our business. So even back then, I knew that I had to have a website, I needed to have videos, I needed to have recordings. And I had recordings from like my senior recital, my junior recital, and uh, those were uh, those were some pretty decent recordings. So I uploaded you know those onto my website, and you could also check those out down below in the description. Now, fast forward to 2015, and I had no idea where to, where to start with trying to figure out life, with try to figure out where I wanted to be in music. And uh, this was like a really big struggle for the next two years because I was working in retail. I worked a retail job. I was also trying to gig on the side. And I was also um, driving for Uber and Lyft. And that was very stressful because, I mean, I was grateful that I had a car to be able to make ends meet. But at the same time, I was just like trying to, I was freaking out because I don't have the money to fly out to these major orchestras to audition. For me, I, I didn't have that uh, financial capability. So I'm like, I had to be really creative with what I wanted to do. So what ended up happening was I worked retail for a year. Then I got a job at this local string shop, worked there for a year. That second year out of school, I wanted to do something in like, music business because I'm like, well, I like the business side of things and maybe I can combine music and business and kind of, you know, formulate them together. So I applied for a program uh, out in Europe, in Spain, but that process was like super, super stressful. I ended up not getting it and I thank the universe for not giving me that opportunity because I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for that rejection. Maybe this is the whole point of this vlog is to continue pursuing your dream even though you have these obstacles. And uh, one of the things that I learned is you just have to commit and you have to be dedicated, but also you have to be consistent. And consistency is something that a lot of people talk about um, when it comes to different kinds of careers for music, for growing a social media influence. It's all about being consistent. It's also about enjoying the process. And if you, if you can't imagine yourself doing anything else but music, you're in it for the wrong reason. So that music business career didn't go the way I wanted to. But I was grateful enough that like a, an opportunity came in last minute for a, a graduate program in, in the state of Massachusetts, you know, at UMass Amherst. Again, not this is not sponsored by them. I just happened to do my grad studies there. 
and that was my um, that was kind of my leeway out of the city of Boston and uh, you know local into Western Mass territory countryside. So this was very uh, different different change of pace for sure. I'm like kind of starting from kind of from ground zero. Like I'm still close to Boston to maintain some of my gigs and also try to pursue uh, a master's at the same time. And to me, that was a big struggle because I don't even think I mentioned this to a lot of people, but as I was pursuing my master's, I drove back and forth maybe two and a half hours one way to a local orchestra, the local to Boston, definitely not local to you know Amherst, but definitely it was, um, I had a lot of previous orchestra commitments that I signed contracts for. So while I was pursuing my first year of grad school, I was driving back and forth. And I also had students in the Boston area, in the Boston suburbs area. So I really uh, needed that side income. So what I would do over the weekends, if I didn't have a gig, I would drive to Boston for two students because I really needed, uh, for one, I needed the experience of teaching. And I knew that there was there was no other way for me to build that experience. So that was number one. Number two, I just needed to keep my life going and to have some kind of income flowing in. I was grateful for the fact that I had a I had a stipend coming in from grad school for my um, from my teaching assistant duties. But at the same time, I still had bills to pay. I had a had a car loan to pay, credit card bills that. Um, that kind of overflow from my time in Boston. So I had to really uh, kind of be creative in the sense of how I earn my income. And as word spread around, I got a job uh, locally in you know Western Mass, and I did a did a lot of gigs, did a lot of teaching, and and it's uh, it's been it's been a real journey. Now looking back at that time, I don't regret a single moment. I am so grateful for the process and if you're watching this video, if you made it to the end of this vlog, I applaud you. That means like you're so interested in this journey of being a musician and it's it's not easy. I will admit you will have some ups and you'll have plenty of downs. Just staying consistent, you know, start, start dirty, start scratchy. Like if you are watching this YouTube video, if you want to be a YouTuber, go make your first video today. Or if you want to be a podcaster, go make your first podcast today. It's so easy. And if you want to, if you want to create music, there's nobody stopping you from creating music, right? If you love music, if you love what you do, just, just do it. You know, there's no one stopping you from it. That is my vlog for today. I don't know how long this vlog is going to be. It's probably like in the 15 to 20 minute zone. But anyways, if you made it this far, I really, really appreciate your support. And I want to create this awesome community um, on my YouTube channel. So please make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit those bell notifications. Also check out some of the links down below. I think I'm uh, doing some pretty uh, interesting project with the violin podcast, which I'm the creator and host of and uh, the Everyday Musician podcast, which is kind of on hiatus right now. But yeah, check those links out. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.